What's going on guys, it's David here, and today I thought I would give you guys three tips for crushing your first CrossFit competition. Do me a favor, and if you enjoyed today's video, make sure to hit that like button and that subscribe button, because that lets me know I'm creating the content that you guys want to see. Without wasting any more time, let's go ahead and hop into today's video. And I bring this topic up because this last weekend I had a CrossFit competition with two buddies, and we didn't do as well as I had hoped, but I was able to get some take home points from that competition that I really think is gonna be able to benefit a lot of you guys looking to do your first CrossFit competition. And the first point that I wanna bring up is make sure that you practice. Practice, practice, practice. A lot of the times when you're entering these workouts, they will most likely give you what the workout will be ahead of time. Usually it's between three to two weeks before the competition takes place. You'll usually slowly start to see uh, the workouts that you will be doing at the CrossFit competition. And this is something that will definitely benefit you because you'll get the chance to do dry runs of these workouts or actually do the workout uh, with your teammates or by yourself and just get a feel for what the workout will feel like. You'll be able to see at what point you start peaking as far as your heart rate or as far as where the meat and potatoes of the workout is as far as like the amount of work that you'll be doing. And so you can do a dry run go through the workout, see what it's gonna be, be like, and then make the changes that you need to make accordingly. This will allow you to get very comfortable with the workout so that by the time you do come to competition day, you're not stressing out about how you'll perform or what you'll do. You've already been going through the workouts, both mentally and physically, and so there's nothing really to worry about. I bring this up because I usually try to do this in most competitions, but this year I didn't really take this competition seriously. And as well as my teammates, we didn't go through any of the workouts. And I think that was probably one of our biggest downfall is we didn't spend time practicing the workouts. We didn't spend time practicing our transitions between each movement uh, as we were doing things like holding the barbell with two people holding the barbell and then one person was doing uh, toes to bars and then there was a transition period where the person from the toast bar would come off and go to hold the barbell with another person and so those little things will save you time but you won't know where you can save time unless you practice these workouts before competition day. The second point that I want to give you guys is to make sure that you relax. This was something that I actually didn't even experience in a CrossFit competition. This was something that I experienced in my weightlifting competition. I think I mentioned to that I think I mentioned that to you guys a couple months back. I did my very first weightlifting competition and I had a coach who essentially was my handler and he told me when I could start lifting. He told me what jumps to make. I really didn't have to think about anything except getting onto the floor and executing. I went six for six. I PR'd my snatch. Uh, I didn't PR my clean your jerk but I did about the same. I say all that to say a lot of the times I think with athletes when they arrive to the CrossFit competition, let's say the CrossFit competition starts at 9 a.m., most likely those athletes are going to try to start working out at 9 a.m., which I don't think is the best thing to do for a, any competition for that matter. You need to treat this competition like another training day. It's nothing different. It's just the same. So why would you start warming up for the workout if you know that your heat starts at 10, but you have to be there at 9 a.m.? I would say, hey, wait until 9.30, 9.40 to start warming up. Maybe start warming up with lighter weight, move up into whatever weight you need to in order to feel comfortable so that when you get onto the floor, you can start working and not have to worry about um, your tightness in your hips or things of, of that nature. But I would say, take your time. You don't need to rush with jumping into warming up when you're at your competition. Take it slow, take it easy, take some time to see how other people are doing the workouts before you do the workout. Because again, as we talked about practice in the previous point, you may be able to take some points from what other people are doing and pull those into what it is that you're doing and then even do even better uh, with your performance for that day. Last but not least, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I say that to say, don't go switching up how you do things last minute, the week of, the day before your CrossFit competition. Don't go on a keto diet right before your CrossFit competition. Don't start eating things that you normally don't eat. If you're lactose intolerant, don't drink milk before your competition the night before. Those little things, while they may not seem to change much, 
you will find that, let's say for example, if you drop out all carbs that week before your CrossFit competition, you probably won't feel as energized. You probably will feel a slight decrease in strength. Um, if you drink milk and you're lactose intolerant before your CrossFit workout, you're probably gonna feel like taking a shit before your CrossFit competition or before the event. And so these are very little things, but I feel like these are things that a lot of people don't think of. I've seen these questions come up on the CrossFit subreddit, and that's why I really wanted to make this video for a lot of you guys that are out there, because even though these are kind of general tips or tips for beginners, I think this is, again, something that will benefit a lot of people that are interested in doing CrossFit competitions. So for example, if you always clean and jerk heavy in weightlifting shoes and there's going to be a heavy bear complex or something of, the, of that nature, then it would most likely benefit you to continue to wear your weightlifting shoes for that event. Don't go switching it up and say, hey, you know, for this clean and jerk or this bear complex event, you know, I usually lift in my Oli shoes, but today I'm going to go on my Metcons. Don't do that. That's a recipe for a disaster because you're most likely not going to hit the depth that you normally depth or that you're used to hitting. And so just that slight tweak, that slight uh, change in how you normally do things will definitely start messing with your head when you start to make attempts and you're not making the attempts that you want to make. But again, that is something that I think also to touch on just briefly, something that you need to consider because when you go to these events, your adrenaline is gonna be on high and so you're probably going to have a little bit of a strength increase. And so again, that's why I say, just relax, you know, if you are planning on hitting 135 for a uh, one rep max snatch event, you know, you might be able to sneak by and pull out 140 or 145 because the adrenaline is going to be pumping through your veins. You're going to have that fight or flight syndrome or that fight or flight feeling and you're just going to be pumped. You're going to be amped. So when, the, when you feel that, let that feeling ride. It's gonna be a fun, great time. Uh, again, just make sure you practice these workouts ahead of time. Make sure that you relax. Make sure that you're not super tense. Make sure that you, you know you've got some good tunes that's gonna keep you in the right mood. Don't take yourself too seriously. And then finally, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Make sure to go out there and have fun because at the end of the day, that's what it's really all about. It's just another training day. You get to train with a bunch of different people, whether it's a partner competition or it's an individual competition. It's a great time to get out, to have some fun, let loose, and just grab the bar and toss it around and, and meet new people. And that's going to be it for today's video, guys. I hope, hope, hope that you guys enjoyed today's video. If you do, again, please make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Last but not least, make sure to check out the shop, primedforce.com, shop.primedforce.com. It is the lifeblood of this channel that helps me afford and pay for everything that I need in order to keep this channel running from products to camera gear and things like that. So if you definitely enjoy the content that we're putting out on this channel, make sure to check out the shop, pick up something. We got some hot new tees and, and all sorts of cool stuff for uh, training. So make sure to check that out in the description below. And as always guys, as I close out every video, may your coffee be black and your barbells be heavy. Heavy. This is David, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.